Ah, uh, let's get started, shall we? Episode 124, cycle 2105. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was going to start this one earlier, so this may be about... Eh, I would say it's probably going to be about three to four hours. But uh, I was going to start this earlier, but I started having some energy outages. That's great. Got me offline for about 40 minutes. Thankfully, you guys over at YouTube don't have to worry about this one. But yeah, today we should be starting planning for getting on over to the shovels. I also need to pre-plan where we're going to put them. I think that's going to be the bigger problem. Also, also, you have to make sure that we prevent the specialty version of them from infesting all of our stuff. Because we can't fix them. At all. In all honesty, feeding them is almost worthless. Unless you're doing it on the regolith planet. Mostly because there's just, there is not enough mass to feed them with. Effectively. Even then, you literally would... It's, it's one of those weird ones. You pretty much have to transport resources from the regolith planet to wherever you have them. So if you want to make a food plant out of shovels on your main base, you have to constantly pick up more regolith and then send it back automatically. Which is easily done without glitches. But the problem is, is getting enough actual waste again over there to build everything again <laughs> not terrible because we've already kind of perfected the system i've done this multiple times before just want to make sure nothing is exploded it's radioactive Rads. i still gotta get this thing online but i don't really want these guys claiming dirt but my dupes keep giving them more dirt sure this consuming but yeah it is oh the dupes are doing it from below that's what's going on I see the problem they're going in like that because these should not be getting any dirt whatsoever at least not at this time keep delivering dirt and I'm like where's all our dirt going? I know we're producing a lot more but just ah I think they could do that from below. Oh, I'll make it out of that. Later. Ah uh, what are we missing? What are we missing? Half the iron urban wine. Let's go check out Gene. Food, 90%. Okay. Loaded yet. I should turn the reactor back on. Or it could just stay on even though I clicked it off and I made sure last time. I actually double checked that. It must not have went off because I paused the game and didn't let it run so I'd count it. Oh, that's frustrating. Ah oh, well. Not the end of the world, just mildly annoying. There's more thunder. Hopefully the internet holds. That was the problem we were having earlier. Uh in a random just like, hey, we have an internet outage. Why? No clue. Well, we're having one. <laughs> eh, crap. Also, also, we really need to rejig that. 
obviously do cubes anyway. Alright, twelve. Radiation exposure. Okay. We can also keep working on this. That needs to get placed in there, there, and there, and there. Okay, they're currently digging. Okay, just damn it. Let's try that. We finally run out of polluted dirt to send? Oh, thank goodness. I have such grabbing steel. I did need to go over to Fapalin and double check my stuff. Looks like we're all good on all of that. I do not want sweep only. What I want is. I don't think it's miscellaneous. Removal? I should be worried. I'm there, it is. Negatives. Bring me all of the lime. <laughs> and I mean all of it. Probably also just start sending over the eggshells anyway, so we can process them in the green base as well. Uh, should we take a culture? What if it soil? Super coolant is absurd. <laughs> I'm never going to get over this. I swear. But yeah, that'll eventually freeze the entire system. By itself. It's just that powerful. That is just... Oh. Super coolant is fantastic. Seriously, if anyone ever does a playthrough and you need... And it's just... If you get access to infinite close fullerene, just make super coin. It's your best friend. You don't even have to think about it. No. Okay. Those are all fine, and I'll just keep infinitely making more. Whenever we need it, the dupes will make me grab it. I just think there's something else I can do. I mean, in theory, I could just remove all of this material. Or it should cause a problem. It is all in CO2. CO2 is just being vented into space, no problem.
Yeah, if I can clean that up, then we can get the adjustment, like overall adjustment. Uh, what else? Right. In all honesty, I probably should just be venting this all outside. Helping it along because I don't care enough. We're also producing clay here, so that's also kind of nice. The excess oxygen that's being made is kind of interesting. I am a little worried about Shiro, but it should be okay. And we don't push too far into it all at once. It should be okay. Storm there. Everything else seems to be working out okay. I, oh, I forgot. Okay. Nope, yep. Base is nice and green now. Permanently green. Yes. Ah, uh, the bigger problem. I need to vent this. At least over to here. I think it might finally be time that we do it. We'll go check on Gina here in a minute. Just to make sure he's okay. It should be he should be done pretty short like very, very shortly. Suddenly there's really no way to increase digging of the machinery. So that's a little rough, to say the least. Uh can I repurpose this exhaust point? Sure I can. Yeah, I can totally reuse that exhaust port to vent all this stuff into space. Uh, I should probably pipe up here for a very long time. Only of you existed. We had cycle. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to clean that up. Power wise. Gold. I'm not good until it's all finished. Pass wire in Eventually, this will be the connection point. This will all be sealed in. So yeah, we'll have one here, one here, one here. That's all sleep farm. It'll all be nice and automated. Jane, you done yet? Nope, 1,000 left. Aaron Allen, 
pretty sure we finished everything, I think. I would, uh, I'm gonna hope we've finished everything and sent it all back. Fiber 8, gold, aluminum, yep. Five degrees and falling. Good, good. Um, we pretty much need to start replacing wires here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the base is kind of made of terrible. enough gold that we don't have to care anymore, which is really nice. I'm not gonna lie, feels good, man. Really good. Probably could put this all in actually. Upgrade it anymore. Big downside, we can't go in here to fix that. But I can fix the harvest. This one's going to be a fiver, so I can deal with that. Probably get that finally. We're gonna have enough gold. <laughs> we might. Really, really, really pushing it. Done the entire power network over here, I think. Uh, we can get rid of all of this. Needed. There's not needed. This is probably. I'm probably gonna have to rejig the whole power network just to make it look better. In all honesty, that should be going through the floor and out of the middle of everything. Point nine falling. Okay, dupes. Um, all that installed. Okay, what do we got? Coal. Allergies, new. Rock fed them. Quick learner, noodle arms, new. Unpracticed artist. <sighs> cooking. Building cooking. Quick learner, but noodle arms. Nope. I'll take the coal. Thank you. I'll make more sleet wheat frost ones. We seem to be missing the sleet wheat grains. I know. Some of them have died. At least rotted through in certain areas. I will admit, I'm starting to think I might need to start venting all of that.
Yeah, all in all, definitely need just to clean this up. Do I want to just start putting this into the base and then clean up the rest? I mean, we could. I could probably set up a filter system. Mmm, yeah. That needs to be top around. We just need regular gas pipes. Let's take the oxygen and pump it into the base. Actually, I should do it at the corner edge there. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, probably a good idea. to be destroyed. Besides that, everything else seems perfectly fine. But we'll be, we should be able to just vent everything but oxygen out. And we can repressurize all the oxygen back into the system over here. Might need to put some oxygen tanks down. Have room for them now. I also kind of want to go to that door, but I think we'll leave it right now. Yeah, I'll leave that for now. There's our CO2 filter. I'll be removed, repurposed. All the polluted oxygen, any CO2, anything else. Get it out of here. I want a vacuum down here. Now I can force steam in, into the entire system.
Hey, do that many. Machine is done by now. Yep. Change targets. Head back home, bud. should stop taking dirt. Let the system run its course. Waste do still. Still reaching kind of absurd levels of polluted dirt. <laughs> yep. Wait, why are we getting actual dirt? Uh That's not allowing manual use. Oh, because we're actually producing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> like, wait, why is that? Oh, yeah, the tiny amount of dirt. We finally made it to a point where there is not enough polluted dirt to fill the system. And that took forever. Finally turn up dirt. Resume it later. I was wondering why there was so much. Uh, we may need to actually allow manual use. Yeah. Just because we had so much excess dirt from the polluted water. And all this extra hydrogen should be getting vented. Is good. Actually. Yeah, remove that natu remove that tile first, and then we'll clear up the rest. Okay, can you uh, remove that first? Oh, <laughs> Come on, dupes. Let me have to do. <laughs> I know they are totally going to make me do this, but uh, fine. The dirt's kind of hot. I do. Yep. This doesn't need to be obsidian, but I just like be one thing for the time being. We'll probably swap it later. We need to do some that, and then we can build. dirt.
Okay. Now the bigger question. Where do we put the conveyor rail? Ah, uh, that's the big question. And where are we going to build it out of? Possibly copper, but I kind of want to keep using the copper that we're producing. Well, copper ore, I should say. For our large-scale natural sleep farm here. We already have just enough for this place. We're good there. Just need to finish the uh, large-scale vacuum system. Good to go on that front. Is here. We see the neutronium anyway. Okay, dude. Um, prioritize this first. And this. should get the ball rolling for them. Still thinking how we're going to get food shipped over here effectively. It's on the tables, bam. We gotta get Gene back, reconstitute the rocket, get our rovers all nice and set up, and then head on over. I don't really know if we have enough room to make it. We might have to do a refuel. Well, I know we're gonna have to do a refueling station on Brandon Island. I'm just debating if we need to do it now. It's a bigger question. I'll be here, and obviously we need a third rocket module. Ah, uh, which prep? We're doing. Into the butt. <laughs> Probably make another rocket platform over here, scoop this over, and then make sure everything is connected. Over a bunch of ceramic and obsidian. Yeah, this is going to be a little rough. Doable, but rough for sure. Yeah, this will be the planet that we launch from for shovels. This will also be the planet that we launch from for the rift. Over here. Uh, do, feel free to go out into space to finish that up. At least get the pipe network done. There we go. Food, that's fine. Yep, 12,500 kilograms. We're looking at 1,119 meds per cycle. About 100 kilograms, good. Okay, so the rift generators and refueler is looking pretty solid at this point. The big downside is, is we do need to build a unified power network. Means I need steel, conduct, uh, heavy conductive wire from here to here. <sighs> well, at least we're not using hydrogen rocks. That would be nice. 
<laughs> it would totally fry our entire system. Absolutely annihilated. Uh, huh. Hey, Zenrith. Oh, no. Scammer scheme here is trending in the Philippines. Packed into another car and if you need to drink very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, never... Never fall for that shit, man. <laughs> like, to the best of your abilities... They're literally trying to get you to panic. That's the point. That's the point of the whole scam in the first place. They always do that. They do it for old people, they do it for young. They will always try to do that shit. And the thing is, is... Number one, never believe it the first time. I, I hate to say that, but don't believe it the first time. Immediately call your actual parent. Or family member or whatever. Like, oh, it's so-and-so had this accident, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I'm just going to call them. <laughs> Simple. Because the thing is, is if the number is also wrong, then you know something's up. Especially if the number's up. I know some people can spoof the number, but yeah. Yeah. Hey, I've, I've heard of that scam shit going on before. Like, that was a thing that used to happen a long time ago in the United States. And then they started getting found out because, you know, caller ID exists. So the numbers were always wrong. And people tried spoofing the numbers, but it, it just never was right. Obviously, it can easily get, like, an old, like, you know, the elderly pretty effectively because it's super simple to get them. Because if it's even close, and if you make the phone staticky enough, that you can get away with it. But yeah, that shit's been around for a long time. <laughs> yeah, of course they'll say that shit. Of course they would do that. I think the best part is when, um, uh, like, <laughs> I'll be honest, I have checked my phone before myself, where I've gotten, like, you know, complete, like, it's so obvious it's a scammer's call, and then if I actually pick it up, I'll literally just be like, Hello, this is housekeeping! What do you need? And then they just go, oh, sorry, wrong number. <laughs> or one of my favorites, uh, a friend of mine, he used to get um, scam calls all the time. And he'd just be like, Papa John's Pizza Hut and Hot Dog Joint, what do you need? <laughs> like, and if this is a scam call, you can go fuck off. <laughs> so, I'll be honest, he got some pretty good ones on that one. Because they were like, wait, is it this so-and-so's number? And he's like, who? Oh. Who the fuck are you? Are you getting a pizza or a hot dog? What do you want? <laughs> That's how he would always introduce it. No matter what. Yeah. Yeah, first time will definitely wake you up to the, the issues with them. But yeah. There's a lot of ways that you can answer a scam call. Yeah, I know. I know. That's That's what they're trying to get. That's the point. Okay, we have officially vacuumed that out. But yeah. Gamers will do anything they can to fuck you over. It's just what they do. I know. Okay, apparently the bees don't give a crap about Sandwich. I'm actually now confused. Sand, how are you hurt? 80 points. Oh, you got shot in the face with a rebel. Okay, that makes sense. Wait. Ow. Hold up. You... No? Huh. Of course, they're scammers. That's their job. They sit around in a call center all day doing that. Or they're doing it from God knows where. Yeah, always be careful of that, man. Always check color ID. And this is just to anybody. Always check the color IDs. Make sure it's nothing bullshit. Always double check. If the person is with you at the time, you can laugh in their face. 
there's a lot of things you can do. Yeah, of course. Hey, Asymmetrics, welcome back. Yeah, I know, it's not a job, but, I mean, it is a job in certain countries. Off oh, India. <laughs> uh, yes. There's been some pretty good ones out there where it's just like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yep. Nope. Alright, Commander. Just gotta deal with that one, bud. But yeah. Always be careful with that stuff. And always double check, of course. Yeah. It's probably more along the lines of they were just looking at time. A lot of times when it comes down to stuff like that, the way that they were looking at it was, is it within an average work week? Is it within, like, before 6 and after 7 a.m.? And et cetera, et cetera. And then they'll normally just check for that. That's why almost all the scam calls for that kind of shit was originally, like, between, you know, work periods. They would just hope that they get somebody. Because they can do that, they can literally do that to, what, probably 400 people an hour? It only takes one to make it profitable. Like, that, that's the sad part. They could just run a bot network with a bunch of phones and just constantly spam call all the uh, tons and tons of different numbers. And if one person picks up and then believes them, it's worth it. And yeah, it's just as bullshit as you think it is. Okay, can we clean up any of this? I think Yeah. Then make sure to double check always. That's to everybody. Everyone who ever sees this video. Always double check your stuff. Also, if you're a YouTuber and you're watching this video for whatever reason in the far future, um, make sure you follow Linus Tech Tips on how not to get fucked over. Because <laughs> that poor guy got screwed. Uh... Him and his team. Yeah. It was it was the same thing that we've been seeing on YouTube all in all. Which was somebody who had access to the primary account, aka the Linus Tech Tips. They ended up opening a PDF that was claiming to be a sponsor, and it was malware. Well more so it was malware that was taking the cookies of the automatic login. If that ever happens to someone, immediately refresh your logins and change passwords. <laughs> and make sure you have two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication will not protect you against the, that kind of attack, but it will prevent it from spreading. And if you rinse the cookies and all of your login um, credentials, then they can't log in anymore. Because it will automatically create new ones, which will kick them out of the system. So if that ever happens, and again, as is duly noted, these videos go up on YouTube. So, again, this is, like, for historical purposes. If anybody ever sees this video, yeah. If that ever happens to you, remember, clear your caches immediately and clear your, to your login tokens. So if you, when you click Remember Me, make sure that you clear that. And that will save you a massive amount of pain and also calling up YouTube representatives. And do it quickly, because it only takes a couple seconds for that to for that to happen. Obviously, number one rule: make sure you don't open a PDF file that comes from a sponsorship deal. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> like, 
And I know that a lot of people will be like, well, you could just check and see if the company, a lot of the companies, when they send out emails, use actual, not themselves. So they will normally use marketing team companies to do the sponsorship. Team. And those will have completely different headers. So you can't even check that. Just got to check the, the files that if you get a sponsorship deal. It looks a little bit fishy. Just double check the file. That's the easiest way to tell. But yeah, for anyone wondering, that was what happened. You can go watch his video on it because it's actually pretty insightful and yeah, this is, that's pretty much how everyone got hit. That's even how um, uh, uh, Brothcar got nailed originally. He was one of the first ones, one of the first large YouTubers to actually get nailed was that he got a sponsorship deal and it turned out to be one of those token matching malware pieces from a PDF file. They didn't even happen to Linus Tech Tips. I mean, you already asked me that. And yes, I'm running um, uh, 32. 16 gigs should be enough. If you, I mean, obviously you don't stream, so 16 should be plenty. Like right now, we are currently using 68% of my memory. Now, obviously, that's OBS and Oni. That's DDR5, though. Mind you, half of that is the straight. I can tell you, uh, sorry, 40% of that is the stream. That's OBS itself. So, yes, you've asked me this, um, uh, what was it, two episodes ago, I think? But yeah, uh, right now Oni is using about 11 gigabytes worth of RAM. I'm 32, but yes, it, it's currently using about 11. Sorry, 32 is my cap. And yes, according to Task Manager and Resource Manager, it's, yes, 11. OBS is using the rest of it. Okay. I need to reclaim this area as well. Uh, I don't want to... And now we're just currently preparing the base for when we need to actually do start shading over more and more nuclear waste to a killin. I can't send it over yet because the nuclear waste will leak from canisters. That would be a bad thing. Ah, uh, how you doing, Goop? Fine. Uh, dupes, I need that built now. I'm going to take the primary spine and we're going to connect it all the way down on this side through the farm. And then we're going to reconnect everything else through 9,000. Five? Yeah, five. It'll increase a little bit more, but it won't increase that much more. I mean, the biggest issue that I'm going to have is the second we reach this, this is always the problem. Every other planetoid, no problem. But the gassy moves cause so much UPS loss, it's kind of crazy. Just because the, you know, Clyde never really want, intended them to be, you know, you, you can't grow them yourself. You have to let them fall in from space every, what, 30 cycles or something? Yeah, the gassy moo meteors are a problem. Just the gassy moos in general. It was like, if you just do basic pathfinding, like show navigation, this is fine. Gassy moos are puffs, but worse. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. It's not. Well, jetpacks cause a lot of light, too. But they're, that's not really the big issue. I mean, I normally avoid the jetpacks because they're not really that, you know, they're not needed um, for the most part. Yeah, show navigation. Like, betas, for some reason. If you have a bunch of them, yeah, it's going to cause lag. When you put them in a tiny area, they kind of just don't cause that much lag. If I had all my betas out here, I could be seeing probably like three FPS loss and a bit of UPS loss. But gassy moves are like this, but the entire planet. Because every time that you're, you know, working with the gassy moves planet, the planet itself is tiny, but the amount of space that they're given is huge. Like, I would say it's like from here all the way down to about here, worth of space. 
And all of that pathfinding tiles are calculated. <laughs> and you get like, what, four or five of them every, was it, 30 or 50 cycles. And they just become really annoying. Not to mention that they also end up just, you know, leaving dead body parts everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't make things any easier when they start off-casting into polluted oxygen in space. So yeah, it's one of those weird ones where it's like, I really don't like gassy moves, at least in their current iteration. They just cause too much lag, they're like Paku, but worse, they have the same kind of speed pathfinding, and it just causes problems. Yeah, the pathfinding is CPU calculated, but the problem is, is that the amount of memory when you change maps that is allocated to them starts to climb exponentially the more you get. That's where the problem comes from. Because, like, having all these critters is perfectly reasonable for my computer, and just in general for base, you know, ability. But the thing is, is that they're all corralled. So these are all fine. The problem with the Gassy Moose, you can't corral them. They just come in from space. <laughs> There's no fixing that. They're just forever there to annoy the hell out of you. <laughs> and land in really awkward places, and it's just like, yeah, I normally do not go to the Gassy Moo planet until last. Just out of necessity, and to maintain, like, what, like, everything else running perfectly fine. This is always last. Yeah, I know. Gassy Moos are just annoying. That's why I say n never ever discover that planet until you have finished everything else. That is the last place you go to. Period. There is no point in going there until you have completed everything else. Then you can go there and do whatever the heck you want, but before that, it, no. Don't do that. Okay. Now let me find oxygen. Read them. Settings. And yes, we are going to start venting everything down here. And then also start digging everything out, too. I think it's time we strip this entire area. Uh, Gene, are you back yet so we can start preparing for rovers and also anything else? Our main goal tonight is to start getting the infrastructure set up for Ikelon. So we can actually build this as a refueling location. Thankfully, I do have enough space. So yeah, I gotta get nuclear waste over here, a little bit of petroleum, and then steel. Ugh, a lot of work to do. <sighs> Not gonna be terrible, but yeah. But yeah, I've always had an issue with the gas in general. I think most people do as well. So again, that's why it'll be last. Uh, oops, why is there petroleum? All with petroleum around here, someone I'm not seeing. No? Nope, no. That's weird. Why, why do I have petroleum teleporting? That's <laughs> a very good question. Not sending any over. I have confusion, but okay. Still going. I need to put material. Uh, let's see. 13,422. Radiation output. 5. I think that's good enough. In all honesty, that, that seems like it's good enough. We can probably stop shooting radioactive material. I'll have stuff in you. Oh, 
Oh, wait. Sure. Oh, yep. 49.1, 49.1. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna let one more shot go off, and then we're going to sever this pipe. Reconnect this system. Should be okay. Come on. There we go. Okay. We can do that. And reconnect. Start refueling our. Uh, petro boiler. Look up uh, Francis John's petro boiler. If I remember right, he has like six different variations in that video. Always, it was his Mega Projects video. Either one. I mean, I've made some very funky ones myself, but it's just like, for a baseline understanding of the cooling rate ratios, just go watch him. I recommend that to everybody if they want to make a petrol boiler. We're gonna one, yeah. I mean, Sand, you've seen me build like three, sorry, four of the dang things. <laughs> like, now that I think about it, <laughs> you've, you've literally, you've been here long enough to see me do four of them. <laughs> so, of course, I'm building one. Not out of necessity this time, just because I can. Ugh. Okay. Well, you, you've seen me do a, quite a few of them here. But yes. All you need to know is... Double door system... One and two. Uh, Robo Miner. Right there. Which would cover all the way down to the bottom door. And then the overall system is a memory toggle buffer gate. Memory toggle back here. Yeah, I'm slowly putting mine together. But all you need to know pretty much is that you're using a memory toggle to control the temperature ratios. So whenever the temperature is accepted, I'm down here, which will be a door like this. What happens is, is when the temperature ends up hitting high enough, so that needs diamond. There'll be two diamond here, door here, sorry, door under here. Which means this actually is there. So that goes right there. What happens is, is the lava ends up landing on top of it, and then you send the memory signal into the memory toggle. How much super, uh, super coolant need petrol? All of it needs it. Oh, you, do. Uh, you don't need to build that. But for reference, so people just understand it, what you're technically doing is you're sending a temperature switch with a buffer time into this. And that way, you can end up extracting the amount of heat needed until the temperature hits below the threshold for this. And then once that signal is completed, it will then switch the doors, because you're running two doors. So you've got one there, and you'll have another one here. Yeah, one, two. So, lava blade, eight tiles. All you need to know. Lava blade goes out to eight tiles, you have two doors, you have two little tiles between these. What this does is, is this allows the lava to pool on up up here, then this will switch, this will open, this will fill to here, it will then shut, based off of a buffer gate. Magma core enough? Uh, technically yes, but you will eventually burn all the magma to energy, you want a volcano. Like if you're doing a, if you're doing a long term project like this, like boilers, you really just want to use a volcano. Because the amount of energy and time and resources this takes, like, most... I'll be honest, most boilers with a good dupe core team takes about 40 cycles to put together. But you're looking at 25 to 40 cycles, depending on if you have the resources already on hand, if you have a good position for it, it's already dug up, and your dupes are at least level 20 in digging, or sorry, uh, at least 12 in digging. 
But yeah, normally I would say for the amount of time investment it takes for an actual petroleum boiler setup for just this side of it, you're looking at like 40 cycles on its own. In most cases, if you're doing it on main base. If you're doing it anywhere else, then yeah. How much Petra needs to make super coolant? Uh, not much. <laughs> like, super coolant does not require much. Let me make sure. Up. Uh, super coolant, you're looking at 49.5 kilograms for 100 kilograms of super coolant. Or 10 pipes full. Like, 10 pipes segments full. Or 49.5. So, less than half the amount of mass. Oh yeah, oil refinery is plenty. The only reason that you want to do a petroleum boiler is if you want to end up either fully processing your oil so you have no more loss, which is always a good idea. Um, or if you want to eventually build a sour gas boiler, which I will probably build here at some point. Obviously, we'll go for the achievements first, and then if I so choose, we'll probably build one over here. Because we have enough space. Most of them, I would say, are about 25 tall by... 15 it was? Yeah. Like, about that big. For a sour gas boiler. If you want to go, you know, full speed and everything. Mind you, that, that is an absolutely absurd amount of power that is produced. But, yeah. The only reason to do that is, A, just because you can... And as a byproduct, unless you were, I don't know, if you're dramatically low on water on a planet, then this also works quite well. Because you can always just burn it off for polluted water, and then you can ship the petroleum out using nuclear waste. Yeah, I do. That way people can follow along and I can at least explain everything while we're doing it. I mean, if you want to see it, here's triple speed. It does run in it. It's just our frame rate starts dipping really bad. <laughs> but it does run, as you can see. Oh, yes, we always play it in one speed here, just so that way people can keep up with me. It's easier that way anyway. So how's Gene? Oh, also, I should mention this, is that there are a couple things that do only run in first in one speed as well. So if I remember correctly, uh, let me go to one real quick. Yep. So Puff's consumption rate and the Bleachstone off-gas rate are only... No, I do not. I have an i7. It's a 6-core. Uh, or not six. Um, oh, it is six four. But uh, yeah, when running the um, puff specifically, if you're running at triple speed, these guys don't work right. It is also the same problem if you ever end up deciding to build a morb farm. Morbs do not off gas properly at three times speed. They actually off gas, if I remember right, at one eighth speed when you're running at triple speed. No idea why. No idea why it's never been fixed. Still a bug. But yeah, the biggest issue, obviously, is the puffs. Because, again, the way we finish our playthrough, as I keep saying through this entire playthrough over and over and over, is we do all the achievements, and then we make sure we have an interplanetary hot tub system. The only way to do that is to have squeaky puffs and actually be producing bleach stone. These guys don't function at triple speed. Super annoying. Absolutely super annoying. <laughs> like, it's actually ridiculous that, that that it doesn't work that way. <laughs> like, if I remember right, the amount of food that they eat is dramatically cut down when you're running at triple speed. But that also means that they produce much less bleach stone. Which means you can't make as much bleach stone per cycle if you're running at triple speed. Which is dumb. It is absolutely stupid, and it's ludicrous. It should never have been a thing. I still don't know how they'll ever fix it. I really don't know. It's the same issue as I said. If you're, if you're trying to do an unorthodox base build, let's say morbs, 
You cannot run the game over one time speed. Because it just doesn't work. No idea what what coding is messing with it. But they just... They do not time dilate properly. <laughs> at all. And yeah, it, it is really frustrating. So yes, if anyone is ever wondering why, if they're running a morb farm, or they're running puffs, why their puffs are not producing enough materials, you're probably running the game at triple speed, and you didn't even know. Because, again, there's really no way to tell that something is off. At least not with the morbs. Which is really infuriating. There's also some really weird issues with temperature transfer through material of the same type, but that's not really that big of an issue when it comes down to the overall like temperature gradient that you'll end up seeing. Like, thankfully, it doesn't completely break the game or break a very specific method of making something. It just makes things a little weird. Now, so that up. That. Ah. It should be able to reach that and let's connect. Oh, I would expect that. It's only two cores, man. Okay. I'm assuming the dupes have finished building all of our cables. Or not. Eh, they're getting close. It's only re redoing my entire network here. I sent over a stupid amount of gold. I'm like, yeah, screw it. Oops. Just build that in. Uh, ooh. Hey, we got the temperatures down. Good. Good, 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 good. That's what I wanted to see. Yeah, super coolant is ridiculously <laughs> all this stuff, right? I really do. I just need to sit down and just replan the whole thing. I'll probably do it like before we start up an ep actual episode, so that way I can just show off the completed product. Because going through and making sure everything is sized right, then making sure it doesn't melt, is a tedious process sometimes, especially on this side of the map. Ugh. Well, I mean, it, back in, a, like, what, maybe, say, what, 15 years ago, that would have been at least okay. Nowadays, oh goodness, no. <laughs> that on my tail. I need to make my way back here soon. Oh. Okay, good. Now, let me clean up the food here. And we will start restructuring the rocket. Biggest issue I'm going to have, obviously, is that we need to go reference. Trip distance is 10. Yep. Yeah. So we can get there with the rover, and then we can come back. <laughs> uh, we are just barely able to do this. Seven, nine, yeah. I may need to make this the actual recon spot. Uh, this is the target location. We can get there with just a nuclear. That's very good news. Also, what did we get for the artifact? Ooh, the sandstone. Oh, it's kind of neat. A couple artifacts that are just kind of cool looking. This is one of them. I 
Okay, got any more rock. Copper or aluminum, good. Grabbed igneous rock, didn't it? Yep. <laughs> ah, excuse me. But yeah, we'll... S mm, yeah, once this is done emptying, I'm going to start restructuring this rocket for rovers. We'll take two of them. We'll refill the rocket, and we'll send Gene all the way over here, and then all the way back. That should begin the uh, shovels. Everything else is running just fine. Yep, waste good. Okay, these ones should not be allowed. Polluted dirt. That should not be allowed. Okay, cool. Where's the H? Uh, the HDD. I mean, it's a laptop. And I don't know your situation, Sand. But I'd be a little bit iffy on laptops, at least. If right. Not many of them have abilities to be upgraded. There's a couple of them, but. Uh. It's it's only a two core processor laptop with four gigabytes of RAM. There's a lot there's a lot more problems than just the hard drive. At least if we're talking for regular stuff. Well, yeah, of course it is. But I'm just saying that there's a lot more problems than just the hard drive. Especially if you're trying to play, like, Dota. Or if you're trying to play Oni on it, I would be concerned. I don't even know if Oni would be able to run on that. At least past, like, cycle... Maybe 250? That'd be rough. That'd be really rough. I don't know. Actually, here's a really good, um, uh, easy test. I do believe Francis has, uh, Francis John on YouTube, I believe he has a couple bases, um, uh, that you can actually download and try and use them as a benchmark to see if your computer can handle high end only, if I remember correctly. I know once we finish this playthrough, I will be distributing this save so everybody can try it out for themselves and do whatever the heck they want. So, if you end up waiting for that, I mean, you could always use it to benchmark. <laughs> I, I would say that testing other people's large-scale bases is probably a good idea. Okay, give me the other one. And... Thank you, Grim, by the way. And, matter of fact, from a past civilization was analyzed. Sandstone. A sample of sandstone appears to have been processed by the Gravitas mining gun that was made available to the general public. Note, the Gravitas public mining gun model is different than the ones used by duplicants in its larger size. Extra precaution features added in order to be compliant with national safety standards. Yep. <laughs> AKA, we give dupes a very dangerous tool. Uh, now then, big question. Where do we put it? Uh, let's check the cores. Uh, I don't want the dupes to be exposed to it on a regular basis. So here, yeah, I'll do.
emptying the system? Nope, not yet. Soon! Then we'll get some rovers and send them over. And the fun part begins when I have to make sure that all this is dug up before we take the dupes back. And then we can actually end up uh, preparing everything. Uh, also, dupes, if you would not mind sweeping up the excess nuclear waste and shoving it in there. Also, once you guys have finished, I am quite certain we should be okay. I have the temperature set for 28, which is about 1.1 degrees higher than what is required. Yeah. And these things will be running, so it will be warm up there. So it should be okay. So just leave the nuclear waste well, and let it run. I do need to vent everything out from down here and also dig up the entire thing and pretty much extract all the CO2 and the excess oxygen because there's a lot. <laughs> I go based on gas. Yeah, most of that's got to go. Yeah, we got a rover rocket to set up. We have a lot of other micro systems to get set up, and we got to clean this up. The rovers, obviously, we will launch. Them. I can tell you that right now. We're making plenty of resources. I just need to vent the entire system, and then I think we'll be good to go. So, I don't know if they clean this. I need the dupes to check that for me. Food is okay. Okay. We have stopped leaking nuclear waste. And the waste pile is getting bigger, which is always good. How goes wire replacements? Uh, it actually goes well. Everything that is nine looks to be done. Need to clean that up a bit. Still don't know what we're gonna do with that. I'll think of something, but I have no idea at this time. Every month. Why? How about you? I live in a very dusty environment, so it needs to be cleaned out every month. Ow. Ah. Uh, that's a long and lengthy process. <laughs> Normally I have a rubber mat I use um, specifically to not have static, open it up, clean out everything using compressed air, and then make sure that everything else is properly cleaned off, and then make sure pretty much every inch of the PC is cleaned. Also use anti-static um, uh, cloth if you can get your hands on it. That way I don't like it. I don't have a fume hood or anything, so I can't like vent everything out outside, but that would be like the best thing you could do. Uh no. <laughs> do not use wet wipes. Uh I would never ever ever recommend it like that. It's pro it would probably be easier for me to just say, just go look up how to clean a PC with probably line detector. Like as as you said, you've watched him before. Just go watch one of his videos. Pretty sure he's done an internal cleaning thing on how to do it. It's not too difficult, it's just understanding that you must be grounded the entire time you're working inside your PC. And that's really about it. As long as you can do that, you'll be fine.
Okay, that should be the last of the nuclear waste that I need. I'm pretty sure there's actually quite a few videos out there on how to properly clean out a PC effectively. It'll be easier to just watch that instead of having me explain it. <laughs> it's easier to see someone do it than have someone explain how to do it. Might need to shove more water into this. Okay, more ice. I don't. Overloading the system here. Yeah, well. It'll do. It's not great, but at least it works. I may need to add... Might want to just dump some ice on top of this. Oh, it just melts it. Do need to start preparing this though, which is a problem. Yeah. I need to scoop. I need to scoot that up by one. Uh, crap. I only have the materials. Have the equipment. Let me get all that nice and prepared. You don't have to worry about it. Head back to Iridol. There we go. Oh, our nuclear rocket is already above half. We're good there. Um, oh, he's repairing it. Okay. <laughs> so this is like, dude, are you emptying that or repairing it? Okay, he was repairing it. Good. Um, oops. Why is there a baby pip over here? How is there a baby pip over here? Uh... Aye, aye, aye. I don't know, but whatever. Robo, sand, and bucket. Will you get to med bay, please? Okay, the rocket has completely dumped all of its resources. Means... All the modules need to be removed. Okay, principles. See what we got. Hatch. Asphist, bottom of stomach. Research your allergies now. <laughs> Not the allergies. Ah. Uh, uh, critter version and critter. <laughs> what is this dude? Game. Why? The printing pod just said slap. Catalina, you were going to get slammed. <laughs> oh my goodness. What the heck happened? Interest. Cooking. Rocketry. Ranching. Traits. Kitchen Menace Critter Aversion. I can't make that up. The <laughs> game okay, just said, No, your interests are terrible. <laughs> Here, have negatives that directly impact all of them. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's... What happened to poor Catalina? Oh man. That's just... That's just pain. It's just... It's the quintessential pain right there. Pulling in the hatch, that was... Oh my god. Ow. It's just ow. That poor hatch. They... Oh my goodness. Oh man. The hatch is just like, I'm the only one viable in this pile. Look at this other one next to me. It is... Oof. That poor dupe. Ow. 
the temperatures are also messing up again. I swear I need to make more aluminum here. It's too hot on the dirt, the dirt situation. Force the issue on that. I also really should just insulate this thing with uh, ceramic up to this point. cooling aka I need to transfer more of the energy into the hydrogen as uh, that hydrogen is negative 23 degrees <laughs> that should start dramatically diminishing everything else That's already all ceramic. Yeah. Oh, little bits of it are. Come on. There we go. Okay, temperature's falling. That's what matters. Okay, I'm cleaning up all the excess garbage dirt. And the problem is that the dupes are taking this dirt instead of all the other dirt for some reason. Because, well, the dupes can be complete and total idiots. So, <laughs> there's really nothing I can do other than forcibly cool it down at the uh, end point. Because I could be cooling it down at the start, but even with that, I think they would still take the harder dirt. Because they're already proving that they'll be taking the hotter dirt for some weird reason. And it's very odd. Has a problem. You know what? That's still 26 points. These two that are too warm at the moment. Okay, there they go. It should hopefully cool down the entire system. Just enough. I should also stop leaking as much temperature into the system as possible. blob of CO2 is still left not left the room. <laughs> still frustrated by that one. Uh, okay, they're eating. Good. Hopefully this doesn't get too cold again. And again, well, we still have more hot dirt, so... And of course, the dips are going to take that over everything else. 
even though I have all of these pips actually producing dirt, they aren't taking it, which is the annoying part of the whole situation. Yeah, I need to deconstruct that. We need to reconstruct two rubber modules made out of steel. Yep. And a basic nose cone once this thing is deleted. Also now 6.3 tons of this stuff because we still have more lime to go through. Ah, oh, I have so much lime that really needs to be processed. Actually, how is, uh... We finished everything else. Yep, okay. That's not shipping anymore other than from critters. How about you guys? Big shells to lime, fossil to lime, fossil to lime is done. Is there any more fossil on the planet besides over here in the corner? Not really, no. I do have to be careful of sour gas. I don't think we made any just because it's going to get vented into space anyway to a point where I don't think I need to care. Uh, I should also pour off. Is in all honesty, I'm just venting everything into space on this planet to a point where I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> There's so much extra gas is being produced just from machinery that it's kind of nutty <laughs> when you think about it. It's just, oh, look at all this excess CO2 included other materials. And yet a little CO2 is just vented from these and only excess is from him. And most of this is just being sent into space because... Well, I, I don't care enough. Uh, how much lime do we actually have when I'm thinking about it? Everything seems to be processed besides eggshells. Ah, 2,235 kilograms. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I might need to send all of that up. Pictures. I'm getting cold now. Also getting cold. Uh, have I been... Where's my lime? Oh, my lime is right there. Yep. Okay. Like, where's all of our lime? Ah, yes. Perfectly where I needed it. There we go. I just, just vent all the excess gas. We don't need it. Oh, no. Got a fleeing alert. Was that over here? Uh, no. Might have had a quantum tunneling crab incident. Nope. In the main base. Fuck it. Ah, Lex real got hurt. Uh, Lex is mildly injured? Yep, they got stung. Okay. Four points of damage. Rocket is already almost full. I need... No, 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 no. Let's build it out of steel. Enable auto-delivery. And add a steel nose cone. Oh god. Did somebody spawn in without it? They just hotfixed this! Cly! Ow! Now, what the, what the... What the fuck? I have no other way to describe this. How did you get through here without a suit again? Was it you this... I mean, this is your first offense, but... It, how? 
Run, you idiot. Yes. Just run. For some reason, the bees just don't care about your existence right now, which is good, because you need to make it back into base right now. Because somehow you made it into the room without taking the suit. They just hard fixed that. God, it must have broke with the last update without them even noticing it. Not again. Damn you, map compression. That's what caused it. Apparently they, they haven't fixed it and I hadn't seen it happen yet, so it, was, it seemed like it was finally fixed. Nope, it has made its ugly return again. Your dupes can make it past a uh, ammo suit checkpoint. Uh, without a suit, even though they go through it. Super frustrating. Not the worst thing, but definitely not a fun thing. Okay. Our nuclear rocket's all good. Um, apparently nobody went and grabbed the pickled meal. Wondering about that. I dropped it on the way. And I dropped it in the worst possible spot. At least it's in a sterile atmosphere, but yeah. Not good. and 59. That'll require some more finagling again. Because, yeah, my dupes want to take the hot dirt rather than the regular baseline base dirt for those for some reason, because they're being idiots. <laughs> we have 145 tons and about 34-ish tons is the hot dirt. We have over 100 tons of the stuff that's at room temperature and they're just, oh, no, 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 no. We take the hot stuff. <laughs> I, I will never understand the times. I really don't. Rockets all filled, nose cone is ready, and refrigerated food, good. Thank you for the warning. Should get the whole thing going. Okay. Um these rover modules need to be filled. This needs a new target. Be there into orbit. Once we get the rovers ready, we will then fill the food, and we will stick Gene in, back in the rocket and send him off. And then we'll get a, we'll finally get our first look at the surface and see how badly wrecked this planet is, because this is the only planet that gets meteorites. <laughs> And this one actually has an iron and an ice meteor shower because we actually discovered it after the update. Got the little icons and everything. Uh, bam. I'll have to wait and see on that one. I want to see how bad the planet surface is. Probably a mess. All the regolith planets are always a mess. Not quite a nightmare to land on, but they're definitely up there on the... Uh, <laughs> kind of category. I'll start rebuilding that one. We actually need to add a yeah yeah add one of those in there. Don't have enough on, enough on, on the iron side of things. I don't have enough for the rest. But I will be switching this over to a heavy watt wire, and this one. I want to connect this to more. Yeah, do it like that.
then all of this needs to be converted over. Also, these need to be scooted. Because these are off by one. And yes, this will be kept branched over into the main base. Which I have so much more steel on me right now. Oh, and gold, in all honesty. I want this entire wire to be gold, so I can reduce the damage it's going to do on the dupes that are exposed to it while they're, you know, working on everything. Ah, oh, that's going to be the hard part. That and I also need to replace the vocal keys. Um, hmm. Oh, it's ants. I do like the new uh, wallpaper, by the way. Problem is, I don't think I can rotate it. Anyway, nope. <laughs> I was like, I'll just use the rotate key. Nope. But we'll just kind of have to deal with it. But yes, all these interior plastic pieces will eventually be replaced with just ladders, and then we're going to have a auto sweeper on each of these. At least that's the plan, anyway. Uh, how much extra plastic? Oh, yeah, I've got plenty. Okay, that should be fine. assume it's just the vent these in general yeah they're, they're probably the issue I do not need that made of the steel thank you game iron is fine that'll work Nine prior to that. I like the diagonal, it's just I need I need the other colors so we can actually do something with it. Uh wouldn't mind having different like labelings via the wallpaper. Because you could do some pretty nice stuff with that. Yeah, we need to get that done first, that way I can regulate how much power we're consuming. And we built the rover. Rover is completed. Rover is completed. Okay. Making sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, we need 35 edible. This is a full round trip. I feel bad for Gene, but that is his job. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You have saved my dude. Well, you've saved all of my colonies over the years. Where is he actually? There he is. <laughs> yeah, Gene has done a lot of work. Oh. Uh. Once he has completely refilled the thing, I need to make sure it's at 100%. And then we can send him over. So full oxygen load, almost full water load. Put it in. Group stay. Change target. Make sure we are landing in the right spot. Uh, can I get more? No, I can get more that way. Okay, buddy. G 
Eugene, it is time. How are you doing, actually? 42% on morale, 37 on platter, food is good. Oh, he's all good. He even got a hug. Good job, buddy. Time for you. Get lunch sequence. And we have left off. Good luck, Jean. Time to discover the surface of a new planet. Also, um, I'm going to target that planet and shoot plastic at it. <laughs> Mostly because, well, we're going to need it. So I don't really care. <laughs> oh, and some glass, probably. Yeah, we'll send glass and plastic. Thankfully, as long as the rovers don't, you know, deconstruct the canisters, we won't have to worry about the glass or anything else warming up before, due to meteor showers. So that should be perfectly fine. Let me this all up. There we go. That is reachable from there. All the rest of that should get picked up so we don't have to worry. I'm just going to disable all the pumps for the time being for just a little bit. Almost drained all of the gas. It's gonna be a while though. Grab the snow, that's all targeted. Gene, I am gonna leave your enclosed telescope enabled. What are you guys doing? Actually doing okay. Temperatures is negative four. What is the And now we had more sleep. Lost ammo. It's not the worst thing in the world, just not a fun experience. Oh? Hey, it's safe to stand here now. Well, almost. It's safe to there. Kind of. Nope. Never mind. Oh, now it's safe. <laughs> it's moving. Uh... Well, we are slowly clearing the heat. That's going to take so much time. <laughs> it really is. It's worth it, it's just a pain in the ass. All hards bars, that is a pain in the butt. Definitely need to make a couple more frost buns. More. So that's a nine. I really need that scooted out so we can get the other natural tile down. Um, I do need to add more temperature chip plates, though. Oh, triple strike. Welcome back. Apparently, sending Gene to go probe the new planet while we're optimizing everything else to the best of my abilities. How goes it for you? And 
we're slowly cleaning this all on up. I'm good. Hungry though. Ah, I gotcha. I feel bad because I kind of want to switch all my camping, all my cots to camping cots now that we've got the skin for it. it looks really good. Downside, that's a lot of switching it out. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure my original beds are still here. Yes. Yes, they are. Really, the old, one of the oldest objects in my entire base. Oh, they added skins. That was part of the uh, new update. For reference. The fly closet. Da -da -da. Once it loads. I do love the music in here as well. But yeah, while you're playing, just like how in Don't Starve Together, you can get skins by just playing the game. You actually get quite a bit of new stuff. I really want this one. The really weird thing is, for some reason, these don't rotate. I don't know why. I wonder if it's a bug. We did get the, the uh, lab flask, which was nice. And they also added Overdroid Reaction, which is... Uh, I see Draco skins. I need to get the Pip one. Where is it? Oh, there's the shovels is nice. And I want this one. <laughs> for how much we run around with the Pips. I need it. I need it for my dupes. <laughs> yes, they also added the other stuff. Which is all costumes and whatnot. I do like this one just for the, the hilarity of it. But this one's still one of the better ones. And they also did some more artworks and stuff. And let's see. Yeah, there's that one, there's that, that, and the lab bed. And there's a bunch of new light, the, the actual lights. I'm really happy we got the camping cot. I like that one the best. That one's okay. Yeah. I've been slowly... I was just testing them out to see how they look. I gave Zal their, the new one. But yeah, thankfully... Saying these are just skins, it won't really do anything. But the bed will be saved via the save. So, we're all good there. Yes. Nuclear power, we are up to almost 30k reds. Almost. We're getting close. And yes, how is Jean doing? Doing fine. I did want to check his food, though. Yep, 99%. He's all good. We've got two rovers on board. So we'll be landing two of them on the new planet. And hopefully we can find shovels. Early. <laughs> it's just like... Please let me see the shovels. I need to, like, go get their asses. Ugh. Hopefully we'll be able to start getting shovels from the printing pod. That'll be, like, the big thing. Because then I don't need to worry about food pretty much anywhere for a while. You don't know what to do for dinner? Um... Hmm... I have no idea what you would like to eat. But I could probably give a suggestion. Mm. Maybe Mexican? I don't know. Mexican, Italian? Either one? Because <laughs> why not? I mean, if you go for Mexican, and you can get whatever the heck you would normally eat, or Mexican food, tacos, burritos, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. or you can go for Italian food, which would be pasta, pizza, breadsticks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm saying one or the other, not both at the same time. <laughs> Chinese? I don't know. <laughs> I'm 
I'm grasping at straws here. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, dupes. Please make that. There you go. <laughs> so why have they not moved the snow yet? Snow been full? Oh wait, yeah, it was actually full for earlier. Um, hmm. Let me just do that, that, and that. Eh, yeah, then do that. Why not? Kind of expensive? Yeah, good point. That is a fair assessment. Good plan. Okay, we clean that up now. And that one. Rewiring the base of it. So that will connect up to the that end up there. All of this is going to be heavy watt, but this still needs to connect there. That all needs to be separated. This needs to be separated here and then reconnected. This big old wire needs to go this way. bad for this plastic, but that's gonna all melt. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, temperatures of the base are getting to where it's safe for the nuclear waste. This pipe should be about 30 degrees. Yep. Ooh, bookshelf spawn. Um, I definitely want to grab that, but I don't know if we have a spot for him anymore. Um... Nine critters in there. Okay. We do technically have a spot. Downside, obviously, is... We gotta scoot all that out. Uh, let's see. So right now, they are pissed as hell. Um, where's good right? Grab me the pinch rope. There should be one there. Um, that's connected. It's on. Automation, maybe? Ah, here we go. That'll do it. Okay, now they are no longer pissed. Hey, okay. 
Oops. I need you to wrangle this and drop them off there. And then when you're done, you will take the bench rope and we will shove it back in this container where it belongs. Um, I'm assuming they already wrangled him. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> okay. I was like, I'm not getting the option. You already retrieved him? Yes. Also, we need well, manual use, sweep only. There we go. Okay. Put that back down to a nine. We need this at a maximum emergency level, critter egg. I want pinch row. And then sweep. Somebody please retrieve that. Thank you very much. Okay, dude. Uh, Ricardo, move the heck away from them. Thank you. There we go. And we can turn off allow manual use. Turn that off. That'll do. Uh, Ricardo, I know you're technically safe there, but uh, I don't want you near them. Out of a precaution for your own safety, <laughs> please don't stay near those guys. They, they really don't like you or anyone near them when the egg is nearby. Or like they don't... I don't know. <laughs> the crabs are a weird one. Like, they technically like you because your dupes will take care of them, but the second an egg is nearby, they will absolutely try to murder them. To an almost psychotic degree. Still having power problems. Why? Oh, because of this system. Yeah, that, that's fair. That should stop draining all the power at the base. Anything else plugged in yet? No. Not covered. Probably all the heat from the nuclear waste. Yep. Okay, I need to send over more petroleum to fill that liquid lock and this liquid lock. We're going to head over to Butelon and do that real quick. I need you to shoot it over there. And Gene, how you doing? That is so many canisters. Uh, it's all plastic and glass. I love how much stuff I can send per second, but it's kind of ridiculous. Like, no stop? That's that's pretty nutty. I'm standing with 65 tons. Okay, uh, 70. That'll do. <laughs> that's so much. That's so much material. Plenty of enriched uranium to work with. That's all good. Alright, just using this rock script. Why not? Hopefully we can scoot all the water out of there.
That's still so much mass. Alright, I'll do some deck. And clean up this mess. Finally get rid of it. Not just a pipe dream, we can finally clean up the last little blob of crap that we need to finish up from before. We have the mop order. Let's go. Come on, guys. We have so many dupes here. Good job, team. And yes, I know it's kind of cold down here. Fine. <laughs> you can do it. Buildings. Fine. Still fall on O2 everywhere. That's all that matters. And dupes. He's mopping it up. I'm going to the bathroom. Sorry about that. Come on, hit the corner. There we go. Okay. That is finally cleaned up after all this time. Uh, it's taken forever to clean up. Let's see, how much closer is he? He's on the way. I know you can't store resources. Fine. A little convoy of resources flying there. Yeah, as long as we're sending enough glass for solar panels for the rovers to put stuff down as they go, then we should be good. That is if there is even a spot to put the rovers. Which is completely possible that there isn't. Hopefully that's not the case, but uh, we'll find out once we get there. Okay, cool. That's all good. That's, oh, good. Let's finish that. Add our next natural tile. Let's be down how close we can shoot another one. Ever so slowly. Ever so slowly. Oh man, I need to send so much material over there. 
<laughs> I need to speed up the process of sending petroleum around just to make it so my petroleum liquid locks are much more efficient. Uh, it's frustrating for sure. Not the end of the world, just one of those like, ah, that's annoying. Yes, venting all of this is going to suck. <laughs> There's so much gas built up in here, it's not even funny. The good news is, we're reclaiming all the oxygen. And pretty much just venting everything else. The bad news is, there's a lot of it. may end up just sending rovers over to do this job. The only issue is, is obviously the granite. So down here it's fine, it's just up here really needs the dupes to clean it up. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna do construction orders. Digging orders. Everything here down gets a 7. All of this stuff up here gets a 9. Anywhere I see granite or wolf mine, it needs to be manually dug. Save that one. I really don't think that's possible. I will try. I don't mind these being in here until it gets really, really hot. Should be okay. here. <laughs> uh, I hate that, but eh, what can you do? Sometimes it's just needed. I think we're done sending all the glass that we'll need. I guess we can just keep sending plastic. Chili. Not too serious, but definitely chili. Uh, 
Um, how are you? Assume you passed out on the wheel. Sending that back to main base. Good. Alright, purifying room to work. I'm planning on building another to keep up with the fluid of water output. Good. I hope my design helped. It's super simplistic, but yeah. You know, pretty sure it could be optimized. NASA probably needs a second temperature shift plate, but. Super coolant kind of just says, screw you, I am overpowered as all hell, so... Eh? <laughs> I don't really know if it needs another one. No problem. I've been using this design for... Not forever. Ever since I learned how mechanical airlocks work with technically crushing gases, this is like the very first thing I tried. And it, okay, cool. And then I'm pretty sure everyone else ends up doing the same exact thing. It's just, okay, cool. So mechanized airlocks create a vacuum seal. Awesome! Wait, how many applications can we do with that? Yes! <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, as a collective, everyone who plays Honey ended up making this at some point. Or at least learning from someone else. Oh, yeah, this was the very first thing I ever built just because I wanted steam to, I wanted a cool steam vent to actually get it to work and not be overly complex and annoying. I am. I pretty much just replicate this every time. I hate that fact. It's just, I always replicate it. Every single time. I don't know if there's a better way, though. As far as I'm... Well, as far as I'm concerned, I, I just don't know if there is a better way to deal with these things. There might be, but... I don't know. Maybe I can make it smaller? No, the sensor. Hmm. I could put this up there, but it's there. Yeah, no clue. It might be possible to make this one tile smaller. Perfect size for the steam turbine. Yeah, no idea. I really should try that on my test lab. No, I just always use the same design, I just keep forgetting that I'm like, I should probably test that and try to make a better one. If it's possible. I have no idea. Hmm. No clue. I know my petroleum, my petroleum boiler came from Francis John, and then obviously just all the different iterations I've ever had to do based on spacing. And his stuff always works great. And then obviously we have the Rodriguez, which is this is the mini Rodriguez. We have a micro Rodriguez, which is just one of these. And then we have the old Rodriguez, which was again made by a guy coined by the guy in, on Reddit who ended up making the original version of the Rodriguez, which was for electrolyzer setup. I mean, this dang thing is freaking massive and can handle 30, was it 34.5 dupes or whatever? It's absurd. Absolutely a necessity, though, for large bases. <laughs> Two of them is a bit overkill, but one of them is just a backup in case I actually need it. Or if I need to burn off more water. Yeah, I always feel like my, most of my bases are either stuff that I've ended up building myself, or stuff that I've taken from iterations of other people's stuff, or just... Literally just be like, yep, here's our Rodriguez. Here's our Francis John petroleum boiler. <laughs> that kind of thing. Obviously, everything has to be rescaled for space, but yeah. Oh yeah, everything is slowly built up over time. And that's how all Oni bases work. I still feel like I should probably more optimize my... I see Dracos. And these ones are still... Yeah, they're 91. 
Whereas the ones with Talon were not for Talon. I need a Talon. These ones were 96 and 90. I really should probably double the clock this one. It's not completely needed because I'm still technically... I'm not cooling the room down. I'm just letting ambient space temperature take it. Yeah, I know. It took a lot of work. <laughs> How's a BG? genie? Welcome. But yes, I've done many, many different Rodriguez setups, and I always do the modular design of the, the micro version, which is just the one, into the medium size, and then into the full size. And obviously this one can be upgraded into a full size, because we have space here, and space here. But yeah, I love the Rodriguez system. This thing is fantastic. I've been using it ever since it was originally, in, like, designed. Like, man, that's, like, way back in 2017. <laughs> I uh, love these things. They're great. And yes, I fully recommend it. <laughs> it's just, it's rushing electrolyzers will save your butt in most playthroughs. I think in almost every playthrough, for that matter. The only thing I do have to pay attention to is that I am technically purifying it just for the sake of doing it, not really for any other reason. But yeah. Toilet water is here, excess is over here. So the Rodriguez is enough. It's a fully capa like fully maximized ver um, setup for electrolyzers. Specifically set up for 32.5 duplicates. So this is enough oxygen for three full pipes if they're running at full tilt. The only issue with it, obviously, is if you're not running 30 duplicants, then you will probably never see it running at full tilt. If I brought everyone back to main base, we would absolutely see this thing going ham. <laughs> so this would constantly never be reaching actual maximized pressure. But yeah, it is way overkill for most things. But for your main base, you normally want to have one of these. If you're planning on going for 30 dips, this is the setup that you do. And then you're done. Basic setup wise, you're looking at about 900 to 400 or 900 to 600. Normally you want to lower the uh, hydrogen depending on if you're actually running at full tilt or not. But that's about it. I have a backup one to pretty much just deal with the excess water we were originally producing before we got the nuclear power plant online. Still feel like I should probably start cleaning out most of this extra steam, but over here we're just going to eventually cool it down and turn it back into water. Over here, I don't. We'll probably just vent it to space, or I could shove it in here and cool it also down. I don't know. We'll figure something out with it. Now then, how's Gene doing? Ah, good. He is researching. Hey, there it is. God damn it! <laughs> it's all the way at the edge of the. Freaking souls. <laughs> Finally found my uranium cloud. Thank goodness it exists. I was going to get really sad if the seed didn't have it. Ah, oh, we have renewable uranium. Yes. <laughs> it's a tidy amount, but that's all that matters. Yay. <laughs> like, I've been looking for this one. Ah, oh, it is... 10 away from main base, so I can send a drilling team to it. Cool. Oh, that's going to be fun. Thank goodness. Renewable uranium. Yes. Uh, now I, and it's within range of main base with nuclear rockets, so now we have the fastest way of getting there back, trip back and forth. I'm okay with this. I would have loved to have it here, though. That would have been nice. That's fine. I'll take my Gilded Asteroids within range. Ah, oh, that's so good. So nice. Ah! Oh. Ah, <laughs> oh, it feels good. 
Well, I know what we're doing immediately after we, do, we land here. Reconfigure the rocket again, and then immediately launch it for over there. Gene, you have more digging operations. Congratulations, you're bringing back more food for the bees. Uh, I should really automate dropping uranium into this room for them. I don't... I have thought about building a mega filter, but then on the other hand, I'm like... That's so many items. It really is. When I say mega filter, I mean... Using your main power spine, or off to the side of... One, one of, like... Yeah, how can I put it? For your main base, you would either put it directly on the main power spine, or you would put it off to the other side of the map. And the thing is, is you can technically build a giant filter that would filter every single item that would come from your rockets automatically. The problem, obviously, is we're talking a lot of filters. So, yeah. It would be a little rough to do. But it could be possible. The downside, obviously, is probably would be in by... Something that's probably about. Okay. Three, so 10 by 18, possibly? Right, yay big? Yeah, that would be. That would be massive. Completely possible. Definitely massive. Zero point four cycles. He's almost there. Passing the radioactive gas cloud. Actually, big question. I don't think they ever added it. My last playthrough, we did not have a uh, radioactive gas cloud, which was actually infuriating. Ah, uh, no, no increase. Yeah, I know. Shiny Cloud, a ura renewable uranium ore, the best thing I could see in space. Yeah, the last playthrough that we did, we didn't have it. Even though uranium was added into the game, and it should have spawned, it just didn't. But I'm grateful that it exists in this place. Oops, we're slowly working through this. Thank God. You also need to add another ladder there so we can get up there. Okay, all of that's working. We just slowly gotta clean this out. Rain from that cloud, would it rain would the rain glow too? It, if it rained, it would be radioactive uranium mixed with chlorine. <laughs> they this is carbon dioxide in it, chlorine, and uranium ore. And it's chlorine in a liquid state. So it would be raining liquid chlorine inside of a gas cloud of CO2 with solid chunks of uranium <laughs> falling in between it. So yes, it would be absolutely miserable, terrible, and extremely dangerous. <laughs> Thankfully, the dupes are completely protected against chlorine. They just can't breathe in it, but it doesn't hurt them when they, go, when they become exposed to it is get slight eye irritation, and that's it. Which is hilarious. It's like, wait, wouldn't that burn the skin of the dupes? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Dupes are made out of genetic ooze. And for reference, genetic ooze is 9,726.9 degrees capable. So, yeah. And d dupes are extremely hardy. Like, average human being would immediately start to melt at 450 degrees centigrade. Duplicate? 9,000 degrees. They'll take burns before it, but they won't melt. <laughs> oh, popped. Uh, Nitrophobic, cooking, farming. I know they're built different. I mean, they, they get hypothermia, but they, it can't kill them. 
They can be at absolute zero temperatures and it does nothing. They can walk into space and they don't decompress. <laughs> like, ant murder, supply ring farming. I need cooking and operating is what I really want. I'm just not getting it. I think we're actually just going to take the care package of coal. Yeah. As much as I like puffs, the only place I can think about putting them would be over here. We already have puffs floating about. But yeah, dupes are just built different. <laughs> they really are. I should say they're cloned different in reality. I know. Yeah, the excess materials there. Ew. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. of them done. Good. Okay, Frey is no longer trapped. Hey, rocket's in orbit. Let's see. Oh boy, yep. This place is an absolute travesty to land on. Oh, man. Well, we finally made it. Um, there's actually gas here for once. It's a little weird. I didn't think that actually spawned with that, but okay. So yeah, we really don't have that many places to land effectively. I guess we could put the rovers on the far right and dig our way in and then try to protect ourselves. And that's really about it. Okay, Gene. Um, wait, before we do anything, let me drop a save, just in case. I always get annoyed when the rovers randomly phase out of existence. Now, always save before you drop both trailblazing modules and rovers, just as a precaution. They can just phase through planets. <laughs> Been a known bug. Mostly fixed. Don't chance it. So yeah, I can put them down here, or I can put them down over here. I think we're going to just drop them over here and then dig our way in. <laughs> Probably the safe option. Okay, rubber deployed. Wait for it to land. Hello, oh, buddy. Can't wait for him to actually get out of the system. We can instruct that. Okay, good. So he now exists. And deploy the other one. Land him next to the other guy. There we go. Wait for it to land. Okay. If that did, yep. Okay, both rovers have successfully landed. Gene, you may begin the path right back to base. There you go, bud. Okay, now the fun part begins. Um, we need to dig down diagonally through <laughs> technically sand. get where we need to go. I really don't want to end up doubling it, but I think we might need to here. Oh, 
Boom, 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 boom. All right, shovel. You're gonna need to move, buddy. Hey, good. You have steel now. Pretty sure that they can't build that. Nope. <laughs> that would have been nice. Uh, obviously, I can't really build anything on the surface because it's just gonna get meteorited to hell. Ah. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna do this one. I think on regular plants is always a pain in the butt. Auto save is still doing its thing. There we go. We gotta dig through that. We might base down here because this can this mafic rock can actually eat a lot of stuff. So much. Yep, we finally made it. Dean's on his way back already. Thankfully. I love how the shovels are all gonna come here and start eating everything. <laughs> Sorry, shovel. You need to get out of here. There we go. We're not going to open any canisters yet, just because the biggest problem is, is this place does eat meteor storms constantly. And the interplanetary payloads, when they get hit by a meteorite and regolith, it should scoot them up. But it won't heat them up, thankfully. They should be safe. The steel up here won't be. Which is mildly concerning. Probably all of this is going to get ripped to shreds, but it should be okay. I really need them to get things rolling so we can get underneath and get to safety to an extent. Yeah, the temperature's going to be all over the place here. The good news is, is we get a lot of copper ore and, well, actually, I believe it's iron right now because of the changes. Now, let's see, I need to go back to the map. I know, right? Very nice. Uh, but yes, iron meteor shower, yeah. We should be getting raw iron. And ice. Which is actually really good. I only need to ship water over here in, in effect. Now there is oxygen down here, but there is going to be no naturally spawned water. So I'll be ice. Ah, hey, there's some bunker tiles over there. But yeah, we're going to dig our way through. And then try to go figure out what the heck is over here and what's down inside the planet. Hopefully be enough regolith that we can build everything else. I think we'll be building straight down. It should be safe-ish for meteorites. And we'll also have to build across to start making our way over to figure out what the heck is underneath this bunker tile that's over here. The good news is the rovers can dig everything on this planet, which is really nice. The bad news is the planet's actually quite big. Well, it'll be a little bit.
While we wait for them to continue processing. How are you guys doing? Uh, doing pretty good. Okay, cool. Batteries are still getting more energy. A little bit there. He's still operating the telescope. That's always good. Nope, he researched that one. I'm so happy that's actually in range of main base. I can finally start feeding the bees indefinitely and I don't need to worry about my uranium reserves. Mind you, we have a lot, because I have allowed the bees to do all of the uranium processing themselves. I'm, I'm very happy with the bees overall. For late game purposes, these guys are amazing. You want to keep them around as long as humanly possible, or permanently. Which is in my case. <laughs> it's like, you guys live here forever. Congratulations, welcome to the base. Or my primary source of nuclear waste, besides my particle accelerator. Have we broken 30k yet? Nope. 29,144. Ooh. Very soon. Need to put that thing down. I'm wondering what re what uh, artifact we'll get from the uh, other one. I am so tempted to just draw a line across. <laughs> I really am. I don't want to, but I kind of do. Uh, you know what? Let me measure this out real quick. One, two, three, four. I need a ladder up one. Technically, I could just do this. Obviously, we won't have the materials to start with, but as we dig through things, we will eventually get them. I really want to see what's over here. And yeah, the shovels are going to be everywhere. <laughs> which is nice. I just hope they don't die from a meteorite, which is completely possible and terrifying. Oh, there's three more. <laughs> I like how they spawn in at the uh, edge of the blackness. A good old fog of war. Like we're slowly revealing the map. I think it's just all mafic rock. Yeah. Finally, another big asteroid. <laughs> Absolutely massive. How much light are we getting? Holy crap. I'm assuming this place is very close to the sun. <laughs> Radiation is your good old standard 250, but, uh, that lumens. It's almost the end of the, of the day, and it's just like... Yeah. Ha, <laughs> ha, not even close. Yeah. Well, we're going to put solar panels all over this dang thing. Downside, I need sensors to protect them against the meteorite storm from hell. Uh, good news is, is we can just build the same exact kind of shield over here. <laughs> we just did there. 
put it over there. But obviously it'll have to be powered, so it'll require a little bit more work. Nothing too difficult, but yeah. I always forgot how much light you get here. I'm wondering how much it's going to be during the morning period. Check it. of everything now. Yep. That makes me so happy. So many projectiles. I'm seeing so much plastic. We really are going to need a lot because the planet is massive. I will want to coat it in plastic for a while. The biggest issue I can see with this though, obviously, is if I do put a dupe here permanently, I don't know if the shovels will f I'll probably run out of shovels at some point. Mind you, that's like way in the future because there's a lot of them on this planet. So big. But... <sighs> thing they did change how shovels work, you cannot maintain them indefinitely on this planet. Even as wild. I forgot this stuff's crushed ice. I was like, wait, oh, yep. One of the weirdest materials that you can actually end up making. be the bottom. How much space do we have to space? <laughs> I can't see the planet. Oh my goodness, that is so far. <laughs> we have so much space on this one. Oh, it's so nice to see it. There's really nothing I could use it for, but yeah. <laughs> this is the issue that you have with the uh, gassy moon planet. But obviously with the Gassy Moon Planet, they can rain in from anywhere up here. And their pathfinding will be everywhere. But when you're on this planet, there's nothing flying, so it's not going to cause a problem. Now these guys on the other hand... Get that. <laughs> they get this. And this is why you put shovels in a box made out of any refined metals. Yeah, this is the pathfinding for the shovels. This, they can move through all solid materials except for refined metals now. So, yeah. Think this, but in space and everywhere. That's what gassy moves do. Shovels, on the other hand, can't go through bunker tiles or anything made out of steel. Well, any refined metal, for that matter. But, uh, yeah. That's that's the difference. <laughs> they both... They both technically do the same thing. It's just one can fly and be ten times more annoying, and the other one just kind of hangs around and digs through stuff until you put them in a box. And these guys indefinitely reproduce, except for the fact that they can mutate into the Delectas. Delectables, on the other hand, these guys are not indefinite, because they will eventually die out, and you really can't actually do anything with them anyway. But, yeah. Yeah, they give you tonic root, but they really don't do anything. Normally you do want to print shovels, because they are one of the greatest food sources in the entire game. The downside, obviously, is that you must put them in a steel box. Or, well, any refined metals now. So, steel door, metal tile, any metal. Oh, yay big. That's all they need. Uh, 
I'm not even joking. You don't really need that much. In all honesty, you really do kind of want a breathing chamber, so... You would want it like this, with... Basic station... Here, I... But you would put a basic station in the middle. I'll go back to my main base, I'll show you by building a base for digging. This, this, this will take them a little while to do everything that they need to do. But for building a containment unit for the shovels, it's actually really simple. You can use any of the refined metals. I do mean any, so copper, lead, cobalt, iron, aluminum, gold, wolframite, steel, or even depleted uranium. But yay big, I'm gonna make a steel door. Can use an airlock or manual lock. I normally just use steel pneumatic doors. These count. I can buy four. So. And the way that you can do this is you set it up like that. Ready to drop offs, doesn't matter what material. So, station, trimming station, right smack dab in the middle. And light won't do anything, so help you on that one. And one more drop off, and shipping. So, and also a air chute. Probably want to scoot that over in the opposite direction. As you can, just do drop off points, like so, and then drop the eggs in. Or you can have the critters just automatically be put in via your dupes, which is normally what I do. And the only issue is, is that you do need the auto sweeper to be able to reach, at least to some extent. You could just shave that end off. And this is, I'm trying to make something as stupidly simplistic as humanly possible. Still. And conveyor chute. So this will grab everything that will be in here, and then you can e end up either taking these out, be hatched, and then bringing them back in, or you can have them all the eggs consolidated over here. And that's really about it. You could also technically can't reach the whole room. That would be right there. But normally what you would want to do is you have the actual egg breeding chamber, like probably above this. If you need to, you can always dump, them, dump in extras from outside. So say if you needed your, say you printed some, and you don't really want your dupes entering the room sometime. You can set this one on up to be for just dropping eggs off. And then you can set up a... Nation... Ah, uh, where's the critter sensor? Slap that there. If there's over a very specific amount of critters inside of this room, very specifically, then you just turn that off. If it goes over the certain threshold, this gets turned back on. This eventually will end up dropping these off into a chamber above. Food, incubator, gold, oh. and one steel. There you go. If you really want to save on power as well, you can always do the old timer trick. Uh, sorry, not timer. Cycle sensor. There you go. There's your shovel container. 
And the thing is, is that obviously this will speed up the process of hatching them. You can also do the rest of that. What will happen is, is this will pull all the eggs out, bring them up here. Your dupes will take these out from here and fill up the critter drop off in this little tiny room. And then all the excess, you want to make sure these are set for 20. If you really, you can technically cheese the system because you can leave this door open. And what will happen is, is that the shovels will move between the rooms which will lower the amount of shovels that are counted by each critter drop-off in the room, so your dupes can keep bringing more shovels in. Normally, this, hap this will normally cap out around, like, 50 on average. If you really wanted to, you could also add a filter on top of this. So say I really wanted to do a solid filter. Wrong thing. Solid filter. There. Use the conveyor chute there. Connect that up. Uh, the power grid, obviously, you would want to power these, so power right through the center. So. And the thing is, is you would set this filter for meat. So, your input for extra eggs is here. You can take this wherever the heck you please. You can even put it next to your actual printing pod. So say I was printing shovels, you can actually automate the process of retrieving the eggs so they don't escape for whatever reason. So you could just put an auto sweeper here, put a conveyor loader over there, and then ship those over to this chamber very specifically. And the thing is, is you can also set this one up for manual loading, so your dupes will do it automatically. But the main thing is, is that contains all the shovel meat that you will ever, ever use. And I do mean ever. This, if I remember correctly, is enough to pretty much within about 100 cycles be about 6 million meat. And it's dumb. Shovels are broken. I love them. But obviously the biggest problem that we have with shovels right now, if you're playing on an old build, yes, shovels are dumb. They're 25,000 kilocalories per shovel. That's 25,000 kilocalories per shovel. These things are a pain. <laughs> uh, but yes. And these ones obviously at 16,000, but if they die out while they're full, then they will give you the full 25. But if they die out when they are starving to death, then it'll give you the same. So if, if you end up dry feeding them, then you get 16k. If they are fully fed, it's 25. Normally, I dry feed them, so you get 16. If you're getting them from wilds, then you'll get the full 25, because they'll just die of old age. But the biggest problem, obviously, would be the delectables, which, if you're playing on an old save, the biggest problem with delectables is that these will eventually overtake your regular shovels. And every time when, when you're dry feeding them, every time one of these pops into your spawn, like in here, you just lost a shovel, technically. So the only way to repopulate your shovels is from either feeding them regolith, which is a major pain in the butt and normally not worth doing, or getting them from the printing pod. That's about it. The other way is if you are just starting a playthrough and you're running all the story bits, there is a item in there that can spawn it in any of the planets, and it will be the Critter Mutator. Critter Mutator allows you to take delectables and convert them right back into regular shovels. So the main thing is, is they made a problem by creating these guys, and then all of us who are playing on, you know, old saves, um, we're all fucked. <laughs> we, can, we, we literally live and die for our shovels um, uh, through the printing button. But for everybody else that starts a new playthrough, uh, obviously they created the printer mutator to solve this problem, which is actually really nice. It's just I wish I had it. <laughs> but yes. If you need a screenshot, there you go. And also for all the YouTube guys, yeah. I know that there's also another smaller version of this where you don't even really need these. Like, just like one of them. Um, uh, one incubator specifically, and you can just pretty much run like five dupes 24-7 um, in ranching. And uh, that is like the only way to keep up with how many shovels you can generate. I know that there's a couple also other setups that you can, like, Francis John showed one off. I think he got, like, 140 shovels in one one tile. 
ridiculous. Uh, it was it was actually absurd. There's also the other method of containing shovels before you get like being able to do this, is you take one tile, make sure it's off the like off of your base and where the shovels can't go anywhere, and all you do is go to jump off on a metal tile. If you have the automation or if you gain the automation, is you, you can actually do this very early with shovels if you get them early. So that's it. Now you can compress the shovels. They they don't care. And if I remember right, they only need two tiles, technically. Um, in average, you're going to end up having a critter drop off, so you'll have four tiles for them, and each tile, I believe, can handle 50 shovels, if I remember correctly. It was like 24 per tile, or 50, when they added the selective. These guys are weird. They're also really annoying to work around. Oh uh, yes, this is the easiest way to deal with shovels. You just allow them to be fl on a floating tile, and they can't go anywhere. With just a basic drop-off system. I'm actually using that for my slugs. So if I come on over to... Ooh, Drabola. Still around. There you go. Super simple system. This will catch any eggs that fall down, put them in here, and drop them back up on top. But the shovels work the same way as the plug slugs. Because they can climb on all the ceilings and everything. Same as Draco's. But uh, obviously with shovels, you would definitely want to do this and put it on our thing. Yep. Good old plug slug. Obviously these guys will complain when they can't find anywhere to sleep that have a power wire connected to it. But, eh. I don't want them to go extinct. But I also don't need them for anything. And they eat refined metals. And I don't like that. <laughs> and worse. Like, ah, no. Stop eating my stiff. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, these guys are, they emit power, so I wouldn't want to touch one of these things. That, that's a given. I think the highest I've ever seen when output was like 800 watts, so I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I, I don't want to, I don't want to pet one of those things and randomly just go, <laughs> like, I have no idea what kind of amps they put out, but probably nothing good. It would be very bad. Like, I'm glad my dupes wear gloves. <laughs> they all wear rubber gloves, so it's like, technically, they're a little bit safer. Uh, I still wouldn't trust petting a plug slug. <laughs> I really wouldn't. Okay, cool. Racing working away. Right back. Uh, rovers, rovers. You guys like that. Oh, good. They made it all the way to the bottom. Okay, cool. So there is an object there. We deal like that. Yes. Check. Oh yeah, we do have a steam bed. Yes. We do actually have infinite water here. A smoth caterpillar. Yep. There's quite a few of them that are like that. Where's the other rover? Oh, there he is. Ah, gotcha. That uh, rover. Oh, how bright. <laughs> I will say this, my dupes are absolutely going to get sunburned on this planet. <laughs> there is no way they don't. Oh my god. Like, it's almost nighttime, and it's currently 65 thousand lux. That's what, three times Earth? Yeah, I wouldn't want to look up or even be in a suit unless I had like sunscreen and uh, SPF 5000. <laughs> that is bright. The radiation is even that bad. It's just bright. <laughs> My eyes. Uh, other rubber. Clean it up, would you? We will actually have to build on up to clean these things, but it's fine. Let's give new principles.
What did we get? Ooh, Joya Seeds. Oops, they go blind. They just get sunburned, which is not good. Uh-oh. I think I lost Twitch there. I didn't lose OBS, and the recording is fine, but it looks like Twitch just gave me a network error. I see you guys in chat, so you're good there. That's weird. Twitch's website was like, I'm gonna have a problem right now. <laughs> Thanks, Twitch. Uh, yeah. I've got no drop frames, so we're all good. I know the sun's starting to come up, but... Causing a problem? Aim. There we go. Enjoy the seeds. Thankfully, they can actually survive here now. Because, yeah, the base will be around 28 degrees. Because of the nuclear waste requirements. Also, I'm pretty sure the dupes would not mind it being 28 degrees here. <laughs> yeah, it's mildly toasty, but... Yeah. Oh, this? Yeah, it's uh, nuclear waste with petroleum on top to hold it in place. Apparently it is 14,091.5 kilograms of nuclear waste. And its output is 453394. 1,301 and 1,050. Got a little bit of steel in there, but there's really nothing. I'm pretty sure they can reach that diagonally. I know an under sweeper from here could do it. But that'll be fine. Now, I am a little bit more worried about the my uh, accidental overuse of fluids. Uh, I need to dump this system into a uh, reservoir here soon. Producing too much polluted water. Slowly converting all the ice into water on this planet and then sitting into the end of the system. The problem is we've produced too much polluted water because the fish are living here. Uh, crap. Also, it looks like I might need to produce more food again. I know I'm only making them produce some. Uh, Buns as needed. Make some more frost buns. Closer. All of this is melt, so I'm just kind of working around the entire thing. Shove a storage container down. Anyway, I think I do to contain all of the regolith so the shovels don't eat it all. Like I don't mind them eating it, but I don't want them pooping it out everywhere while we're not here. Take it over to the bunker tile.
I'm actually kind of surprised that we haven't had a meteorite storm yet. Yep, two cycles and he'll be back. Very good. Very, very good. Out, maybe music we need to do. I mean, thanks, I'll shut. I'll shut. Currently producing more. Also, looks like the timer is messed up again. Bring that up to the front. Just started. 69.9. Uh, temperature check. Way too cold again. Okay, okay. Need to flash for your area though. It was getting way too warm. More stable is now. How about 87 degrees? 62. Thankfully, that just got too cold, just barely. And it's fine to release more hydrogen, by the way. So, if anyone's wondering about that, if any does get out, it's perfectly reasonable. should start warming up again. I may need to actually insulate more of it. Bottom. One, two, yeah. We'll just do that. That should hopefully stabilize it out. As if it gets to be starting to warm up again too much, then we'll slowly remove it back. I just needed to flash freeze that thing now because I was like, okay, that's going to hit 40 degrees here shortly. That's bad. That's really bad. We don't want that. Oh, 29.457. So close. Okay. And we need... Fish and medium? Ready? Copy. Well, this one is building all of the actual ladders to get us from point A to point B. I'm ready all of that. Once they finish that, we should be able to start filling our containers as a move it the heck out of the way so that they don't eat it kind of thing at this point. Not that we need to do it, it's just I'd rather them not be everywhere. Uh, 
Also, we're gonna do the dumb. So what's there? Three, seven degree. Okay, yep, there it goes. Oh yeah, okay. and starting to warm up. Good. Good, good. Just rotate everything in and out. They should be perfectly fine now. Keeping an eye on them. Gene, how you doing? Eighty-seven percent. Already almost back. I know. This is what I was talking about. Not regurgitating that stuff over, please. Oh, we'll fly. I love you guys, but please don't puke everywhere. Yo. <laughs> Double no. Not like that. Anything but that, please. Welcome back. Had a shovel puke right at the feet of my uh, rover. <laughs> no. Dang it. Not there, man. Why, why you gotta do me like that? <laughs> Steam is in here now. No, no, it's pretty stable. Uh, let's check out the talon. Temperature is negative 20. Refroze everything that needed to be refrozen. Just for perspective, this is one giant cooling loop. This is still gaining, uh, well, reducing temperatures. And we're also technically burning this thing. Which, uh, yeah, that's a lot of killing. <laughs> Probably need to shove our water, to be honest. That way we get more temperature transfer faster. Also, all the dudes should be able to go in here now because the temperatures are actually safe. Yep. No, it does not. So these do not actually consume steam. They just convert steam into water. There's no loss. The only way that there would be loss is if I ended up evacuating it into space. Because, I mean, you can't delete matter. So. <laughs> not in that way. Right? Um, yeah. I mean, it's automatically heating up by being exposed in this room. 
This entire area was... This is a flipped asteroid. This is the crust. Because instead of being at the core of the planet, you end up getting the outer rim of the planet. It's just all lava. You gotta slowly cool your way through it. You just gotta find a point where you can inject cooling into it and then dig your way through. Yeah, we've been slowly lowering it down. All of this is now safe for the dude to exist in the suit. Uh, nope, nope, not here yet. So when you... the suits... No, Atmos suits specifically. They can survive 1,099.9 degrees centigrade. When it goes to 1,100, they start burning. So... Technically, it can be safe here. 1,096.1. But the second it turns to 1, 000, over 1,100, your dupes will start taking burn. So, we're getting close. Eventually, I'll need to rip all this up and also all of this. The problem is, is, yeah. Uh, technically, it would be on the surface, so it would be blasting off into space, in all honesty. I think, um, uh, Io, in real life, is supposedly subsurface oceans, possibly, of methane. But then you also have the, like, tectonic eruptions on the surface. It would still blast outwards. It's just that your crust is now magma. The only weird thing would be is that, technically speaking, you wouldn't get tectonic movement from an active core, so you also wouldn't have like a magnetosphere and a bunch of other stuff. In reality, you would just have probably just tidal forces, so most likely the planet should exist around a gas giant. But, I mean, it's actually not included. We, we opened a rift in space-time and randomly planets, planetoids started spewing out from different universes. The shit got weird. <laughs> it's like physics broke down. Things started breaking. Every, neutronium came into existence. Pretty much. Okay, let me up a food retrieval. Make it, I may actually launch for a radio. I kind of don't want to because I kind of want to send another shipment of rovers over here to keep working. Oh, there's an artifact there. Oh, it's the X-ray artifact. Nice. Yeah, a little bit. Shuffles, please stop doing that. Oh, we're almost to it. The only benefit I have to making these ladders is that when we do get a meteor rain, they'll just take damage and they'll get destroyed, but they don't get deleted. But they'll just kind of exist. And also, they're broken. They don't actually really cause anything other than just don't look good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as much as these kinds of ladders look good. Yeah, that's definitely a steam. There's oh, there's two. Hold up. There's two of them. Yeah. Okay. Normally there's only one on this planet. I'm okay with that. For well, one of something. Sometimes it's chlorine vents, sometimes it's steam, sometimes it's, uh, uh, 
multiple steam vents kind of all over the place. Right now, just to me, actually, sources of water. I should say reasonable sources of water. You can do it. I know. <laughs> I'm just peppering the planet with plastic. Because we're going to need a lot of it. I'm going to need steel for the entire roof of this thing. And I'm going to need plastic for everything else. And then possibly a little bit of obsidian for the insulated blocks around here. And that's about it. Okay, rivers. We have a lot to dig up. I <laughs> do a lot. Oh boy. Did they take the food yet? No, they have not. That should hopefully be enough plastic. Um, where else is there? Plastic. I do need to eventually start planning to do something with that planet. Probably research stuff. I guess we get some plastic over there. The water world's one of the worst, in all honesty. There's no building material on this planet. It's all down in the core. So you really have to just thin plastic over to build everything. So you just build a hanging base made of plastic. Kind of nutty, but it works. It'll be next episode when we hit 30k. Also, start refilling the rocket again. Okay. 
Here's made of the steel. Yep. Ah, oh, getting so close. Soon, and all this will be open, and then I can start venting the rest of it out. And we can just let steam take over. The only real issue is, is I do need to send a bunch of steel over. That way I can ship all of it pretty much like up here so it all gets cooled down. Yeah, we'll have to dump it over here, put it in like a petroleum pile, and then temperature check it. Once the temperature check is cleared, then we can send the uh, steel, or well, the iron on. You need to vent this little room. Maybe stop leaking temperature into it. Yeah, we're almost done. Enough. Check and make sure there's nothing in that one. We should be good to go. here. I keep looking at it, I'm like, I need a pip to be up here. I need to put ladders on everything, except these three here, and make a pip go around and plant everything that I need. Best way to reduce management dupe stress levels. Um, when it comes down to dupe stress levels, make sure that they have a great hall. Great hall is the most important thing. Um, barracks, not really that big of a deal. Washrooms do help. Um, but if you're really, really wanting to push down decor and say like you're doing maximum difficulty, decor really does matter. So decor bombing there where they sleep, if you are running sleeping, that is. Kind of important. I would say decor bomb the kitchen. They're always going to be there. And then there's always this method. Have a nature reserve, recreation room, and stable. And then make sure that they can only enter the nature reserve after the rec room. Or, well, sorry, before the rec room. Because what will happen is, is every time that your dupes go on a break, because once you start animating everything, they will definitely be taking breaks in the rec room. And they will always go there. Like, if you only have one rec room, they will always end up here. But make sure that the rec room is after the nature reserve. Nature reserve will automatically be applied to them when they go through. And if you end up putting a stable in, you can put cuddle pips. Grim been hugged yet? Good meal, great haul, last decor plus six, nature reserve plus six, interested skills five, five shift break. Because they're a, um, uh, acolept. Sociable, showered, washer, duplicate. Yeah, scuttle pips are very, very nice for that. Typics, have you been hugged yet? Yeah, you were hugged. Okay. Yeah, hugged also reduces 
progress, increase the overall morale. Um, just for reference. Oh, let's go. We're looking at morale values that are at 50. And also... Yeah, Butalin. Butalin's the dumb one. Because we have good old Neo here. With 63 because of Hot Tub. Hot Tub gives plus 5. Nature Preserve gives plus 6. Great Hall gives plus 6. And the core value of Gorgeous when you heavily decor bomb gets you up 12. Yep. Technically speaking, running a dupe like this, I can get every single skill in the game. I'm pretty sure, what is it, 74 decor, or, sorry, 74 morale gets you every skill. Might be 75 now? Or technically, I don't really know. I can't get down enough. <laughs> the pyrotechnics might require more. I don't know, actually. Eh, no clue. But yes. You end up getting very, very, very powerful dupes. And you can easily see when they haven't hot tubbed. It's just like, ah, yes. Mushroom duplicate, blah, blah, blah. He hasn't hot tubbed yet. But yeah, you start seeing stuff like this. Kind of absurd. Yeah, normally I keep the um, uh, requirements around 16 to 21 cap. Um, 16, 15 is normally like where I like to do. As you can see on the requirement. Pretty sure Stella needed another point in something. Oh yeah, she's carrying. And rocket. Uh, let's see. Grim, you already have everything that you wanted. Oof. Super dupes. I just love my dupes like that. Oh, yeah. The core matters. Nature reserve matters. Rec room placement matters. Also, do remember you can do natural planted. Um, nature reserves using dips. Um, this one was our, this oxy firm was already here. But yeah, there's no CO2 in here anymore, but they were taking care of some of it, which does give me a nature reserve. Downside, obviously, is that the core goes to shit in here, but I can always add some basement effects. Problem solved. Always pretty good. I did want to see. Oops, why have you not delivered? Gonna do it. It was my good dupe. Javix! Ah, oh, thank you. There goes. <laughs> Zooms off. Thanks, bud. Your fellow uh, duplicates for not wishing to put it down for some. Oh, that's... <laughs> that works. Uh, it's only a 30 bonus. But it is enough. That's nice. It is just a rock. <laughs> but I'll take it. Shovel, shovel, stop it. Stop it. Uh, up keeping over all, all over my plan. I'm pretty content with that as so far anyway. Yeah, at this point it's always massive. This one just feels slightly larger because I'm so used to working in such a tiny zone. As you can see, I can literally reach it from both sides with just one single click as the regolith planet. I have to do it twice. <laughs> it's way bigger than Bam Paste. <laughs> Uh, at least a third bigger width wise. That is.
Oh, okay. I'm just gonna start poking holes where it matters the most. Getting things ready. Gathering more copper again. Let's see what we get for printables for the last one for tonight. Building. Those. Eh, not great. Decorating, building, farming. Operating marsh, digging, gourmet. Oh, yep, come on. Click the hatch. I'm just happy we have rovers on a new planet already. That was fast. Once we found it, anyway. It's just barely in range. But it is in range. That's all that matters. Okay. Cycle 2125. I'll take it. Now. One more check. Ah, yes. The hot tub team. <laughs> Eventually, every team will get this. We're just not there yet. How is the decor in there now? Oh, yep. Okay. I think that will call it. The sun's currently coming on up. Oh, that was a lot of progress. I'm super happy with that. I mean, the fact that we were able to get rovers down immediately and just start building. It's like, oh, yes. Now I just gotta figure out where we're gonna put the base. Really, the big. No clue. Could be on the left or right side or even center. The only thing I have to pay attention to is meteorites. Because that's a lot of steel we're gonna need. And, uh, yeah. That'll be a little rough. Before I forget. Let it run. It does save that they updated. So save. Because I did this last time, and it didn't save it. <laughs> like, it saved, but it didn't save that I turned off the uh, reaction. Okay. Let's save. Ah, good. Good, 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 good. good. But yeah, I am very happy with the overall progress of the base. We are getting very close to being done. And, uh, yeah, once we finish, then I will start the playthrough. But now, definitely need to plan out how we're going to set up the regolith, or if we're going to go and gather the shovels. Yep, we're ending here. I'm very, very content with the overall progress of the episode. And, uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for episode 124.